leeway. And there's no time frame on that, as I mentioned in a previous show. There's no time frame with that. So you never know. You don't know if that is going to um, if that's going to happen for you in 30 days, 15 days or 60 days. You have no idea. So but you can still file a dispute on these particular collections and you can pick whatever you want for the dispute. It's not yours. Um, I don't remember this account. This belongs to somebody else. Um, the amount is wrong. Whatever it is that the that you want to put in for your dispute file your dispute on that and you can wait and see what the results are but you got to wait for those results to come back first before you start doing anything else when it comes to that particular um, collection so while that's happening you already make your plan your plan and your strategy so if it come back and they say it's mine now what what's next what am i going to do next for um this particular collection am i going to am i going to negotiate it or am I going to just let it be and leave it alone or whatever it is? Make sure that you figure out what you want to do about that. Um, so think about it and have a plan as well for your negotiation. What, How much money do you want to throw at this particular thing? And in every negotiation when it comes to a collection, you want to be asking for a removal. I've told you a dozen times, don't let them wordsmith you to death talking about reflecting it correctly. We'll make sure it says zero on your credit report, all those things. The best thing you can do with a collection is to have it removed from your credit report. That's the absolute best thing that you can do. Now, paying it and negotiating it and making the settlement and all those things, um, because somebody did ask me this too in an um, email, uh, how does it reflect on your credit report? So it'll say this account was settled. So everybody that's reading that, they all know that, you know, whatever amount you owe them, um, you paid a lesser amount and the company agreed to it. So what? Doesn't matter at all how it got down to zero as long as it got down to zero. All right. So it doesn't matter um, in that regard at all how it got to zero. Just make sure it gets to zero for you. Now, within this whole collections portion, only medical collections are worth paying if they do not if um if they will not remove it from your credit report let me say it again only medical collections are worth paying if they will not remove them from your credit report so if you've got a sprint bill and sprint will not remove it from your credit report and you're already stretching to pay them this thousand dollars this 800 bucks or whatever it is and you have other collections out there it would be better for you to deal with the individuals that will help you out by removing it from your credit report. Now, if it's a medical bill, like I just said, it doesn't matter if it comes off or not. If it's a medical bill, only if it's medical in nature. So you can make that payment, but I would still just as a negotiating tactic, utilize the fact that you want them to remove it from your credit report. If you want to go ahead and just throw your hands up on that after talking to them and they refuse to remove it from your credit report, perfectly fine perfectly fine to do so you can absolutely do that but make sure make sure that you talk to them about a removal as well even if it's a medical collection but if you're going to pay that medical collection you can absolutely settle with them on it typically they'll do 25 percent recently i've had some people get 50 percent off a medical collection so you can um, negotiate with them as well um, and when you pay that medical collection and it shows zero on your credit report then it's no longer going to hurt you at all. But again, that only applies to medical collections. And why do I keep re repeating myself with that? Because every time I do a show, every time I do a show about this, I still get a question about the medical collections portion or people confuse medical collections with regular, quote unquote, regular collections like a sprint bill, a utility bill, things of that nature. So I'm just trying to reiterate to you guys that it's medical collections that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But still, you want to use that as a negotiating tactic. Uh, one, it looks good on your credit report. I mean, just to, to not have a collection sitting up there, uh, whether it was paid or not, that looks good for you on your credit report. When a lender takes a look at it, um, that absolutely helps. But the credit score is really what you really want to um, pay attention to. Now, when you're talking about your collections, how old is your collection? Is it six years old? Is it four years old? Is it two years old? If it's six years old, it's not hurting you as much as you think because of the age of the collection. So it's show on your credit report and it say it says it's six years old. The collection is on your credit report. It's actually older than that, right? 
because you didn't stop paying on a Friday and then they put you in collections on a Monday. You stopped paying, you know, four, five, six, seven months prior to it going to collections. So that time counts for you as well. And you know what's going to come off of your credit report in seven years. Technically, it's seven and a half years because it's seven years and 180 days. So it's going to come off your credit report then. So if it's six years old and it's not hurting you as much anymore because of its age, it's older, it's not hurting you as much. It's kind of like any negative. If it's a bankruptcy, the older it is, the less impact it has on your credit um, report and your credit score. Same thing with this particular this particular collection so it's not hurting you that much so if you were to pay it you're not going to get a whole bunch of points back just because you paid it because it's a little bit older right so you have to make up that you got to make that decision for yourself you got to make that decision for yourself are you willing to go ahead and pay this for something that might be coming off your credit report in a few months um maybe if it's a smaller amount you're like ah no big deal i'll go ahead and i'll go ahead and pay it if it's a large amount, maybe you want to step back from that and you don't want to deal with it at this time because you just don't want to give up that particular amount of money. Um, and again, I cannot stress this enough. They need to be removed from your credit report once paid. That's how you're going to get the most points for you. We're talking about getting points and increasing your credit score. So you want to get those things removed from your credit report um, if that's possible. That's always part of your negotiation. It's just as important to me as the amount of money that you're going to actually pay them uh, when it comes to your credit report and your credit score. It's just as important as to have it removed from your credit report. Yes, with FICO 8, 9, 10, you do get points back for paying on your paying your collections, paying them off in its entirety um, or settling for them. You do get points back from them. It's not a lot of points, though. It's not a whole bunch of points. While a collection can hurt your or damage your credit by 60 points or more, you won't get 60 points back for getting that removed. Typically, it's around mm, 25 points or less. Typically, it's around 25 points or less when you're dealing with that. So make sure you deal with those collections. Now, let me mention 609 letters. It's not something that I talk about a lot. Um, and this is all still dealing with your collections. A 609 letter. So you can you can write a 609 letter. Like, what in the world is a 609 letter? Well, 609, it just refers to a section in the Fair Credit Reporting Act. It re refers to that particular section in there. In this section, it talks about the, cr the creditor, whoever it is, if it's your, you know, you have an account, whoever that creditor is, or the collection agency needs to give you um, your information like what do they have on you what kind of information do they have to prove that this is actually um, your account if you're disputing something all right so if it's um, something that's in collections you can absolutely ask for a 609 letter so what you want to do is through the credit bureaus do this through the credit bureaus and the reason I always utilize going through the credit bureaus is because they act as your agent they're kind of like your attorney if you will they are working on your behalf to get things done. This is why I don't like going directly to the company all of the time, right? So they're going to work on your behalf. Do they do a great job? Sometimes they do. Probably more often than not, they do a great job working on your behalf. So you want to utilize them in their services to do that for you. Plus, they know more than you when it comes to all of this stuff. They know more. So you want to utilize them. So go to the uh, credit bureau. Um, and what you're doing in the 609 letter, you're requesting the documents, the actual documents that they claim, that they claim you signed. You want those documents. They're going to get a copy. Of course, you're not going to get the original, but a copy of that. You're going to be asking for the copy of your payment history. You want that actual contract that you signed so you can see your actual signature. You want all of you want all of those things to be able to look at it. And so you can say, yeah or nay, this is not mine or this is mine. And, you know, most likely you already know that it is yours, but you want them to provide that documentation to you. Why do you want them to provide that documentation to you? Because most of the time they don't have all of the documentation. And if they don't have it, it's got to be removed from your credit report. So if you've got a $3,000 um, collection on your credit credit report 
you do a 609 with them and they don't have all the documents, then it's got to come off of your credit report. You just saved yourself $3,000. Saved yourself $3,000 and your credit score is going to increase because of what you just did. So you want to get those documents now. Um, and especially for places, a lot of people call and complain, talk about, man, it was at one collection agency. Now it's at another collection agency and it's at another, it's going to another one. I contacted them and they said, well, they already sold it to somebody else. These places, especially if you've got a collection that has moved three or four times, you absolutely want to do a 609. You absolutely want to do a 609. Why? Because paperwork often gets lost in all of these transfers. They get lost all the time. Sometimes they don't have anything on you at all. And if they just got one piece of paper in their file, then the chances of you getting that removed from your credit report without having to pay a dime are really, really good. So you want to ask for them to give you that information. Um, absolutely want to ask for them to give you that information. Now, when you see these documents, when you see them, if, if your signature is different, you hear me? If your signature is different, putting up air quotes. My, so for me, my signature has changed over the years. You know, I used to do, you know, a big K and a small G for King and all that. It's changed over the years. It's changed over the years. So if your signature is different, you want to make sure that you have that and you see that. So you get those documents back and your signature is different than it is currently. And like you got a signature that's on your ID, whether it's your you know state ID or if your or it's your uh, driver's license, you've got a signature on that. When you get that document back, you're going to tell the credit bureau because that's who you use, right? You go through the credit bureau. You're going to tell TransUnion Equifax Experian, hey, this isn't my signature. I don't know whose signature this is, but this isn't my signature. Here's proof of my signature right here. Here's my ID. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna send them a copy of your ID in that regard, and it's probably gonna come off your credit report. So, okay, so that's a little hint for you. Something that you can do if your signature is different. And don't go out there making fraudulent signatures and all that stuff, trying to sign yourself different, sign your stuff different or whatever. I'm gonna leave that up to you. If you decide, yep, I'm, I need a new license anyway, and I'm going to go to the license branch, I'm going to sign my name differently than I was before, I'm going to leave that up to you. But I'm telling you, if that signature is totally different than what your signature is now, it's worth putting that in. Now, is all this worth if it's 50 bucks? Is it worth it if it's, if it's a $50 collection? Mm, that's up to you. $50 may be worth it for you, for you to go through this kind of thing. But if it is then you make sure that you uh, follow these rules and you, you try to get your 609 done. All right, questions? You're going to hit me up, 800 at creditscoreman.com if you have any questions about that. Now, let's talk about some positive stuff. Now, that's 28 minutes in already. Let's talk about some positive stuff that you can do um, for your credit report. One of the things you can do is sign up for Experian Boost. Yeah, Experian, the credit bureau. Sign up for Experian Boost. It's only going to help that particular credit bureau and that particular credit score, but sign up for it anyway. You can get anywhere from 15 to 56 points, one of the guys on that commercial said. So go ahead and sign up for Experian Boost. You just go to Experian, E-X-P-E-R-I-A-N, E-X-P-E-R-I-A-N.com forward slash boost. B as in boy, O-O, S as in Sam. T as in Tom. You just go there, experience.com forward slash boost, and you sign up. It takes like five minutes. It's free. You can um, cancel anytime you want to. So go sign up, and then, like, automatically they show you, oh, you already got eight points or whatever from, from boost. And it's not a one time thing. You're not going to get eight points every month or whatever it is. It's not set up that way. However, if you sign up for Experience Boost, you'll be able to see. So you might get a bunch of points. You might get a little points. But sometimes every point counts, right? So sign up for Experience Boost. Work on your debt. You need to work on your debt, specifically your credit card debt. If you're thinking, you know, I got some extra money every month, and um, I like to get rid of my car payment or my student loan by paying, you know, more on them every month, this might be okay for your pocket if you can get rid of that car payment faster. However... It's not necessarily good for your credit score. It's actually going to hurt your score to pay off those types of accounts. They are both installment accounts. 
a car loan, a student loan, their installment accounts. You want to concentrate on your revolving debt 